Hi, I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti. You're listening to Personally Speaking. This week, my guest is Roma Downey. Now, we know her, of course, as an actress from Touched by an Angel, but she's also a producer of powerful spiritual films. Her most recent film is called Resurrection, about the life of the early church after the bodily and spiritual resurrection of Jesus Christ. Please stay with us. Monsignor Jim Lasanti, you are watching Personally Speaking. Our guest is the great actress and producer, Roma Downey. Roma Downey was a nominated actress and a producer of many films. Uh, she's going to join me in just a moment. For nine seasons, Roma played the angel Monica on the popular CBS television series, Touched by an Angel, earning her multiple Emmy and Golden Globe Best Actress nominations. Roma was herself born in Northern Ireland, in Derry, and classically trained in London. She is the president of Light Workers Media, the joint venture owned by MGM and her husband, producer Mark Burnett. Under Light Works Media, Roma and Mark produced the Bible series on the History Channel that was viewed by more than 100 million people in the United States alone and was nominated for three Emmy Awards. Roma and Mark also produced the feature film Son of God, which became one of the highest faith movie openings of all time when it debuted at the box office in 2014. Through Light Workers Media, Roma and Mark have produced numerous television series, including The Dove Keepers for CBS and AD, The Bible Continues for NBC. Light Workers is also producing the upcoming feature film On a Wing and a Prayer, starring Dennis Quaid. Their current film is a new biblical epic about the resurrection of Jesus called Resurrection, airing on the Discovery Channel's new streaming service, Discovery Plus. Resurrection follows the immediate aftermath of Jesus' crucifixion and shows how Jesus' followers were hunted, leaderless, and desperately searching for understanding. Roma and her husband, Mark, want to share Resurrection's ultimate story of hope. She's here with us today to tell us more about that, as well as about her own life, her own faith, and the values that sustain her. Joining me now, I'm so pleased to welcome back to Personally Speaking, the Emmy-nominated actress and producer, Roma Downey. We are talking here with Roma Downey on uh, St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day, Roma. And uh, I should mention, this is also the week in which we celebrate one of the greatest fathers of all time, the Feast of St. Joseph. So before we get into this incredible movie, Resurrection, we wouldn't have a resurrection if we hadn't had those two great parents watching over Jesus. So i got to ask you, I'm inspired by St. Joseph, this amazing example of fatherhood. You had an incredible dad. Tell us why he was incredible. My dad was incredible, but you know what's incredible? Because you just mentioned St. Patrick and yeah. St. Joseph, and my father's name was Patrick Joseph Downey. How perfect, and right? Was, <laughs> huh? How about that? Yeah. He was named after both of them. Okay. Um, uh, my dad was just so lovely. He was my wee Irish dad. Yeah. You know, he he passed away, unfortunately, when I was still in college, but he left me with one beautiful story. He took me out to the garden before the um, before I left for university in England. And he looked to the moon and he said, you know, wherever you go in the world, Roma, it'll be the same moon shining down in you. And he said, and wherever you are, I'm gonna leave you a message at the moon. And he would just leave me and I love you, you know? And so wow. this is way before cell phones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I was over in England, I'd look up at the night sky and I would uh, pick up his message. And after he passed, I was a bit nervous about looking to the moon. I thought, you know, my dad is gone, and but he's still leaving his messages, Monsignor. It, isn't that he great? Still, I still get them in the moon. Yeah. And Roma mentions uh, a lot more about her life and her dad and her mom in uh, her own autobiography and talks, talks about the importance of butterflies. But I want to stop there for a second. Roma, you're 10 years old when mommy goes home to heaven. You're 20 years old when daddy goes home to heaven. Uh, speaking of resurrection, do you believe they are now still alive and do you talk to them? I absolutely do. Yeah. I absolutely do. I mean, when my mom passed, I, I don't know how I would have coped. If I 
if I hadn't had my faith and if I hadn't believed because I mean obviously we were heartbroken to have lost her and dad too you know and I I would have given anything to have had them when I was growing up I mean you're so fortunate to have your mum at 100 years old what a blessing (laughs) for you you know Um, but but I you know I the promise you know we've been promised that we will all be together again and I believe that with all my heart and you know, I'm not looking to leave the earth anytime soon, but I know that when I do, it's 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 the ending of, of this human life, but the beginning yeah. of my great soul's journey into, you know, we don't quite know what that's going to look like, but I just believe it's going to be it's heavenly. The <laughs> it's the best. Yeah. Roma, Roma Downey has made a film now about resurrection. We'll talk about that. Roma, when I was in the seminary, I didn't agree with him, by the way, but one of our professors said, it doesn't matter if they found the body tomorrow, because it wasn't a bodily resurrection, it was a spiritual resurrection. I happen to believe it was both spiritual and bodily resurrection of Christ. But uh, what about you? Growing up, what was your image of resurrection that so fed your faith that you've now decided to make this incredible motion picture about Jesus's resurrection? Well, you know, it's interesting that we're making the movie and that the movie's coming out this Easter too. I think this particular time in the world that we're living in and Mm. all the challenges that we've gone through this year. I mean, it's, I don't even think we'll be able to, till we're finally through it and we're not through it yet. We'll finally be able to unpack exactly how it has impacted each of us and, and how we're different because I'm sure that we all are different than we were a year ago. Mm -hmm. I think there've been lots of lessons learned, but For so many people, it has been a very, very hard year. Obviously, some people got sick and uh, many, many, many people died. And the rest of us have just been living kind of isolated lives, like uh, cut off, you know, unable to see people that we love and care about. And so in a way, symbolically, you could say that our homes have become kind of tomb-like for each of us and that we are each also longing for some sort of resurrection from the year that just was you know a resurrection in our lives a reconnection to our families and loved ones getting back to schools uh, businesses opening a resurrection in our economy so i feel that the timing of this is very pertinent um uh, people are hungry for hope and they're hungry for connection and hungry to be reminded of that right and there is a marvelous moment at the very end of the, our film resurrection which I don't think is a spoiler alert. I think everybody (laughs) knows the story. But at the very end of the film, we are reminded that what began with just really a handful of disciples Mm -hmm. has now, you know, with the help of the Holy Spirit, become over 2 billion people today, Mm -hmm. you know. And And there's something in that that's so touching to me, particularly at a time when we felt maybe so divided, and and uh, cut off that the reminder that we actually are part of a a much larger body of people that we belong to each other and that um, you know when we can return to our lives that we can you know take care of each You're other right out of that small little kernel of, of the church has come this two billion uh people uh believers and people filled with faith roman let me ask you something i i years ago approached uh Rex Reed was a famous film critic. And I said to him, I want to talk about religious films and have him on the show. And he said, I'll come on your show. He said, but I don't think there's anything to talk about because all religious films, he said, are by their very nature, boring and tedious. What can you say about them? (laughs) Well, let me tell you, that's not true for the spiritual religious films that you have been part of. Now you're producing another one. And from the clips I've seen, Resurrection is not boring, not tedious, but it captures the imagination. What is it about you, Roma Downey, producer, as well as actress, that that gives you the ability to say, I want a film that's not only faith-filled, but also interesting to watch? Well, I think it's it's critical in this day and age. I think uh, audiences are just too sophisticated, you know, and there's no excuse. I think just because you have a movie that has a faith message or a, you know, a God-centered message, that there's, that that's an excuse for poor quality. It's not at all. And I think in the past, we've all been asked to support 
movies that have been, you know, maybe not as good as they should have been just because they were about something meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that our audiences are too sophisticated and the expectation for a movie to be good is, is you know, there's we, we have attracted the, the finest actors, mm -hmm. the great writers, uh, directors, uh, designers, and, uh, you know, we have a Hans Zimmer, Lauren Balf score. I mean, this is epic stuff. And, you know, nowadays we're able to bring in extraordinary special effects. So for scenes, for example, when... Uh, when when Jesus rises, when the heavens open and the angel comes down, I mean it's yeah. supernatural and it's magnificent and it's yes. exciting. When they when they find themselves in the upper room and he has promised that he will send the Holy Spirit. Well, what's that going to look like? What's that mm. going to feel like? Well, we, again we see the heavens moving and and these you know extraordinary circles of fire coming in around them in the room it's you we cut to the people on the street looking up and you're just thinking what's going on up there i want some of that yeah, what yeah, is right, that right. and when they finally come out of the upper room you know they're speaking languages they didn't even know how to speak before right. they're it's just they're just it's just pouring out of them they're on fire with god you know and that's like so exciting and we're able to do that nowadays you know we also knew that this movie was going to play out like a political thriller mm -hmm. because you have to remember at that time historically in Jerusalem it was like a triangle you had the Romans under the iron fist rule of Pontius Pilate a very oppressive rule these people were really put upon and um and then we had the temple authority and the mm -hmm. Sanhedrin and Caiaphas and and they were so concerned that it was about to be Passover. And, you know, scripture tells us that they tried Jesus very quickly in the dark of night. Uh, they, they, they killed him. They killed him quickly to try to get it over and done with and quiet that Jesus problem. And um, and, you know, and when they realized that Joseph of Arimathea has offered his tomb, and that there's the prophecy that the you know that he would be buried in a rich man's tomb. They think we know he's gonna. They're gonna come and try and steal Jesus' body and pretend that he's risen. So they get the Romans to put the Roman guard by the tomb. They put the seal on the on the stone that would take three or four men to move. Mm -hmm. And so you can imagine in the film the faces of these Roman soldiers <laughs> when that big angel comes down from the heavens, you know. And breaks him forth. And one of my favorite moments is we see the stone in front of the tomb. And then we see in the cracks of the stone, the light starts to glow behind the, the stone because Jesus has risen. And then the contrast that we see from these frightened and rather confused uh, disciples before contrasted now with their, you know, with their joy and their uh, you know, because he said he would come back. He said he was the Messiah. He said he was the son of God. He is what he said he is. You know? Roma, let me ask you, one of the other parts of that story, of course, is you can't talk about uh, Jesus's resurrection without acknowledging that even believers like Thomas had their moments of doubt. Why do I mention yeah. that? Uh, anyone listening to you, Roma Downey says, wow, I wish I had her enthusiasm, her conviction, her excitement about her faith. But, you know, Going back to what we said earlier, we're also dealing with someone who lost a mom at 10, a dad at 20, certainly has had challenges in life. Did Roma Downey always have this enthusiastic faith? Was it always easy for you to believe? Or did you have a time, like some people do, where you say, it's, it's too tough. I can't believe. I have my doubts. I'm not sure. What about your journey? Oh, yeah, I do. Of course I have doubts. I mean, I yeah. think everybody does, you know. Yeah. Um, I, I find that um, that being quiet helps you know okay I, I think we live in such a noisy world yeah. we're bombarded with you know and now we're all on social media everybody's on their phone you know it's just a constant noisiness and you you can you, you can't hear you know you can't hear yourself you can't hear the yeah. small whisper of spirit inside you I have like simple recommendations which I do for myself and they're very effective I find if I can get outside into nature Mm. Even just to see the sky or a tree or to feel the breeze, you know, and yeah. go outside and just be quiet. And it's like, be still and know that I am God. It's like, and it's in the stillness that I just 
it's just like an a knowing, you know, it's just a, mm-hmm. a knowing. Um, but yeah, ch- many challenges along the way. But I think one of the, we actively set out in resurrection to show the humanity of the disciples because we knew that every, you know, that we wanted the audience to be able to identify and relate. They're very mm-hmm. relatable characters. I mean, in the Catholic Church, especially like Peter and John, and you know, we've we've lifted them up, and we we they're saints, and so somehow in our perception of them now, they're larger than life. Like yeah. it's easy to imagine they were just perfect people, but like, the truth is they were just just men, and you know, men and women. Uh, like us and and we have to imagine they would have had the full gamut of emotional experiences that we all have and so I, I think it's very helpful to see that so that you don't beat yourself up you know yeah, yeah it's like you know not to beat yourself up it's like it's you know I always think it's like the alarm clock you know sometimes the alarm clock goes off and you're awake some days you hit snooze you know and you go back right, right. you get 10 more minutes and it's a little bit like that spiritually you know like mm-hmm. there's days just when I really know you know I just know I believe and I know and I'm full of spirit and um and in the gratitude gratitude is another great tool Monsignor to get you there if you've forgotten mm-hmm. you know on the days that you've forgotten it's like you just start your day with being grateful to God for all your blessings you know and if yeah. you start counting your blessings it's like, and you start really focusing on what you have and not what you don't have. You know, it's when we focus on all the things that we don't have that you just create, you know, comparison is a thief of joy, isn't it? It's a thief. Roma, let me ask you for the listeners who are wondering now, hearing about the greatness of this film, wanting to know more, where is Resurrection going to be airing? And Yeah, it's and how going do- to be airing on a new platform called Discovery Plus. Okay. And we're very excited to have a partnership with Discovery Plus because, to be honest, they're, they, they are a platform that um, has a lot of content for mm-hmm. families. It's very family friendly. And I thought if we were going to be going out there and asking audiences to come into a platform, we right. wanted it to be somewhere that was safe for you and your family yeah. to come right. in and that there would be other things that you would want to see on there as well. You know, like they have a really great documentary coming up about uh, Pope Francis. Oh, and that'll be on Easter Saturday, mm-hmm. and our movie will be on all over Easter Resurrection. So you would go to discoveryplus.com, and you would uh, sign up. Uh, you could get a uh, a free pass, check it out, and mm-hmm. then hopefully subscribe. You know, it's. Uh, sure. uh, but you know, we our original intention. We thought around Christmas maybe we could put Resurrection in the theaters because we made it to be seen on the big screen. It's a big biblical epic costumes and armor and Roman soldiers. And, you know, it's big and it's beautiful. But uh, it became clear because of the pandemic that we weren't going to be able to do that. It's not Mm -hmm. safe to be in theaters. Many theaters are not yet open. And rather than keep it till next Easter and put it in the theaters, we thought, no, the, the time is right now. People need this movie now, I think. And I think also it's just great maybe to start a family tradition where you can gather around the TV yeah, yeah. in the safety and comfort of your own home and watch the Easter story. You know, we've, we're have we a country that's gotten obsessed with the Easter bunnies <laughs> and chickens <laughs> and Easter eggs. Now, don't get me wrong. I love a good Easter egg hunt. <laughs> and I, I'm very, very fond of chocolate. But, you know, it's a little bit when the message of Easter gets lost in the holiday, you know, yes. and... You know, and so here's a a simple way to really share the story with your family. Sit down together and watch Resurrection on Discovery Plus. And hopefully maybe afterwards over supper, talk about the film. You know, it's Mm -hmm. a a good entry point for parents with kids just to talk about the story, talk about faith, talk about the role of of God in our lives. And and you're right that the world right now is, uh, because of pandemic, so geared toward pandemic uh, watching on streaming series like Discovery Plus. Uh, in, in a church like mine, my parish has 3,000 families, but during the pandemic, we've had six, seven, eight, nine thousand 9,000 people at mass every single day because it's online. So I'm hoping that huge numbers come to see resurrection. Now, let, let's stop and talk about not just resurrection, but your whole 
you and Mark, the amazing work you've done in giving glory to God through the films that you make. Here's my question. I call it the Derek Jeter question. So Derek Jeter's on our show, the great baseball player. And I say, every kid in America wants to be a great baseball hero, but you got to be one. Why of all the kids in the world who want to be baseball players with the fame and talent you have, why, Derek, would God give that to you? And he said, I don't know, but I'm not going to ask him. I don't want him to change his mind. In the same <laughs> way, you, 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 you Roma, and, and Mark have had an opportunity to use the gifts, talents, abilities, and blessings you've received, where you could have just turned in wood and done it all for you, but instead you share with the whole world this amazing story of faith. Why do you think God picked you and Mark to do the, the work of spreading the <laughs> I don't I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, I, I've heard somebody say once that he, God doesn't always call the qualified but he qualifies the call, you know. I mean, listen, if you had if you if you rewound the videotape of my life yeah. and took me back into the 70s in my uh, Sisters of Mercy um, convent education, Sisters of No Mercy, um, and I was sitting there in, in uh, religion I had, I had class, them too. for example. <laughs> I'm sure I'm the last person the nuns would have like it. Which girl in this class? is going to make, you know, Bible, biblical dramas that uh, right. hundreds of millions of people will watch, you know, <laughs> and I was probably at the back staring out the window daydreaming about some boy. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have been me, you know, so I don't know, but I'm, I feel so privileged that I'm able to combine what I believe with what I do. You yeah. know, I mean, I loved for all those years on Touched by an Angel playing the angel to be the messenger to give a message of God's love. Every week, there is a God. He loves you. He wants to be part of your life. It was very simple. But but over 25 million people tuned in every week for yeah. that message, to be reminded of that. And in essence, that same message is embedded in all the work I continue to do. Mm -hmm. There is a God. He loves you. And he wants to be part of your life. Roma, most weekends as a, a priest in a busy parish, I get to celebrate weddings. And I always ask the couples, I say, I don't want to have the last word when I talk. You tell me why of the billion people out there in the world, uh, why is this the one for you? Uh, at this point, with the great work you do in terms of media, but also in terms of what you do in your, your personal journey, why is Mark the one for you? Uh, my, my Mark is so lovely. You know, he makes me, well, he makes me laugh. He makes my heart sing. He makes me laugh. Um, you know, he's just such a great husband, a great husband and a great partner. We work so well together. I mean, we always joke that the real miracle is that we're still speaking to each other. <laughs> you know, because right, most right. friends I know couldn't even hang wallpaper together, you know. And here we are making biblical dramas together. But, um, you know, we just, he's just, you know, he's just the one for me. And um, I'm so grateful that he came into my life and, mm -hmm. um, you know, and of course this year in lockdown, we've just been, you know, he's my pod yeah. where, uh, and our, us and our dogs, you know, our kids come and go. Right. And we've right. been able to meet with them safely in our garden. We're so fortunate. Mm -hmm. We live in Southern California so we can be outside, you know, but um, we, uh, it's just been the two of us. Yeah. It's now, a good now thing. You're raising a good issue I want to ask you about. With Resurrection being such a visually powerful film, how did you pull that off in the midst of shutdowns and pandemics? Yes, well, we um, we already had the film uh, uh, in the can, as they ah, say. Okay. So what we were doing was was it was the editing. It was our editor, and our editor was working in the studio in London, and uh, we. Uh, uh, we're receiving the cuts, you know, through mm -hmm. the internet. I mean, technology is just amazing, isn't it? And so we were able to uh, finish up the film that way. And we're so pleased with how it came up. It's 90 minutes. It's a fast paced moving. It's exciting. It's compelling. Yeah. Lots and lots of drama, lots of hope, of course. And um, uh, yes, thank you for your support. Thank you for letting everybody know. And, and once again, how do they find out about this great film? They go to? They go to discoveryplus.com okay. uh, and, uh, and uh, t type in Resurrection. Um, and uh, it starts on March 27th, so it'll be up in time for Holy Week. Okay. And then it'll play all through the Easter season and beyond. 
Okay. Roma Downey, I want to thank you so much for being with us and for our, our listeners and watchers around the country. Uh, she, she doesn't know how to produce something that's boring, and resurrection is no exception. It's an exciting <laughs> vision of the greatest event in humankind, the greatest example of human history. You know, Roma, we had on uh, that wonderful composer, Stephen Schwartz, who wrote Pippin and uh, Wicked and all those things. And I said, why then, as a secular Jew, would your first musical have been Godspell? You know, the story of Jesus. And he said, you don't even have to be Christian to know that the world would be a much better place if only we live by his teachings. And, and you try to bring that to bear by showing us his teachings in action. Uh, final question I promised, and it's this. Uh, when I was growing up, 60s, 70s, into early 80s, the films we watched that were religious, uh, they, they were nowhere near as exciting as this. Are you making sure that this film and your other films are getting into the hands of young people? Is there a way to do that? Yes. Well, that, I mean, that that's the intention here. That's why, you know, when the angel comes down from the heavens, he's a, you know, he could be in a Marvel film. Right, you right, know? right. I mean, these, are, <laughs> these are great, gritty characters. That's certainly part of it. It's like these are bi biblical films for the new generation. And, uh, you know, and we're hoping that young people, because, you know, I know myself, I'm a visual learner. And I can read something. I kind of remember it, but if I've seen it, mm -hmm. you know, it's like everything I know I learned from the movies. So um, we really, really encourage uh, your listeners out there. And if they've got teenagers, you know, this is a great mm -hmm. way to just anchor the story. This is the cornerstone of our faith, this story. Yeah, right, right. You know, you could remove Christmas from the New Testament. You'd still have the New Testament. You remove Easter from the New Testament. And it's a whole other story. You know, so this is the most important miracle from the Bible. And um, and we brought it to life and um, mm -hmm. using the best of the best. So we hope you enjoy. We will. And thank you for the film. And Ramadan, as you go off and we leave you, um, tell us finally in the last two seconds, you are ageless woman. How is that so? <laughs> thank you so much i'm good if you could see all the lights i have here <laughs> whatever it um, takes I, but i drink a glass of celery juice every morning it's very good for you okay we'll do that too in yeah. resurrection thank yeah. you for the gift of your film and uh, and god bless roma downey and all the people she loves thank you bye god bye bless now. bye bye take god care bless roma. as we end today's program i thank you all for being with us ask you to write to me if you want to at personally speaking podcast at gmail.com to listen to our personally speaking podcast with some of our most recent shows please go onto youtube and search under personally speaking with monsignor jim Lasanti, and don't forget to click like and subscribe personally speaking is also available as a podcast on personally speaking podcast.buzzsprout.com you can also listen to past episodes by going on www.closeencountertv.com and clicking on the radio button at the top of the page. Additionally, personally speaking, episodes are on my parish website, which is www.ollmp.org on the homepage. Personally speaking is also on Facebook at Personally Speaking with Monsignor Jim Asante. Thanks so much for being with us. We look forward to being with you again on Personally Speaking. I'm privileged to serve as host and executive producer of Personally Speaking. Our producer is Lisa Jandovitz. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll be with you again next time on Personally Speaking.